Wow, uh, Game One Expo is officially behind us now, thank God. Uh, for those who may not be aware, I am co-owner and founder of the Game One Expo, which is a large gaming and anime event here in Phoenix, Arizona. Just happened uh, March 15th through 17th. This was our ninth year. Well, if you take away a couple years for COVID, we didn't do it during the COVID years, but this is officially our eighth time doing the event. And uh, it was a lot of freaking work. <laughs> and I just went in this video, I wanna share a little bit about uh, just my perspective on the show and, and a little behind the scenes and some funny stories and things like that about the event itself and kind of what goes on behind the scenes putting on a large event. Um, now, I started Game On Expo, my team and I, uh, almost 10 years ago. So next year will be 10 years. And I will say this, me, my team at the time had zero experience putting on a show and knowing what to do. I've been to a lot of gaming events, right? I've been to PAX, I've been to Portland Retro Gaming Expo, Midwest Gaming Classic, among others. And I really loved the experience, right, from an attendee perspective. And I really, people ask me all the time, why did you start Game On Expo? And, and simply, I, I wanted to create an event for people in my community here in Phoenix and Arizona specifically about, and people who come out of town, of course, as well, that it's a safe place, right? It's a fun place to hang out, be who they want to be, uh, play what they want to play, uh, do what they want to do in a safe spot, right? Um, and that's kind of why I started in Mesa, Arizona, a couple years there, grew up, uh, we, I guess, leveled up to, if you want to call it that, to, to Phoenix Convention Center. And this was a challenging year because this year was, I just held it in August of last year, and we, I only had about six months to plan this. And, and usually it takes about a year, and six months to you might sound like a long time, but it really is not. Um, I literally had like a week break and then went right back into planning this year. And so it's been, just to think that I've done two Game on Expo events, uh, in, in about a seven month, six to seven month time frame, it's kind of mind blowing to me. And it's, uh, it's very tiresome, um, both emotionally and, and physically. Like this past weekend, for example, I put from Thursday through Sunday, I walked about 30,000 plus steps a day. I think I calculated it's like 60 plus miles I walked in four days. Uh, so there's a lot of walking around. I am eternally grateful uh, for my team. I have an amazing team that helps me run Game on Expo. I certainly don't take all the credit. I take very little credit for the show at this point. It's an amazing team, and I couldn't do without their support and help and, and their care and love for, for Game On. Um, and it's just, financially, it's it's very expensive to run. We had some hiccups Friday, uh, to be honest, with, with with some of the security issues. We were required to, to have security part of the convention center. It's, it's a requirement. We need uh, mags checks, so meaning those things you walk through and they check for, for weapons and they do the wanding. And so that's a requirement. If you want to do an event like ours at the Venus Convention Center, that's a requirement. There, there's no, nothing around that, right? Um, however, there was an event next to us that was a sports cards event, and they did not have security. And they're literally sharing a wall, uh, air wall with us, right? Same building, no security. And you might ask yourself, and I asked, certainly asked them, the Convention Center, why is that? And their answer is because you have cosplay. And because of cosplay, you're higher risk of people going in going doing crazy stuff, which I don't agree with at all. And so ironically, what it comes down to is the cosplay part of Game on Expo is the most expensive part of the show and the event and doing it. And that might sound crazy. And you might think, well, why just why don't you just take away cosplay? Then you'd save a lot of money. I don't want to take away cosplay because I love cosplay. And I think cosplay is very creative. I think the people who do cosplay are awesome. And uh, I think it's a way to express who they are. And if we were to take away cosplay, I think it would frankly destroy the show and it would just not be who I want to be at a show, right? So we're, that's not going to be an option. So at the end of the day, we have to bite the bullet, so to speak, and we have to pay for the security. And I won't say how much security is, but I'll, I will put it this way. I could probably buy a Tesla uh, for the price of what I'm paying for security. And it was a new security company uh, this year, and uh, they didn't do great. I'll be honest, not to throw them on the bus, but they did not do great. Uh, Friday morning was uh, was crazy. There was a huge line outside. I heard like up to three hour wait. Uh, feel terrible about that. We actually ended up adding more security, more help, and by about three or four in the afternoon Friday, things went much smoother. And the rest of the week, thing, weekend, things went much better. So I'm thankful for that. So we did kind of adjust on the fly. We we there were some hiccups initially. I got roasted online on social media about the long waits. It was raining and you know drizzling, and people were not happy about being out in the rain. I can completely understand that. And it's one of the main reasons why I moved and I wanted to move Game On Expo from August to March, to the spring, because for those who live in Phoenix and Arizona, you know that August is summer and it can get to like 110 degrees out, outside. And I didn't really feel comfortable having, not that I was anticipating long lines, but I figured if that ever were to happen, uh, people would literally melt in 110 degree weather and that's not a safe thing. So to me, yes, it rained, it drizzled, 
it was 65 degrees out still. And, you know, yes, it was a little water, uh, but it wasn't a situation where they were melting. So I do feel terrible about what happened. And people were roasting me online and, and I'd be upset as well. So I completely empathize with them and, and you know, just to want to reassure people who were stuck in those lines, my sincere apologies. Uh, we, it won't happen again. We're taking measures next year to avoid that from happening again. So needless to say, there have been some growing pains with Game On Expo this year. And I was kind of expecting that. This is, we moved to a new building, a North building. We expanded over 70% of space. Our ticket sales were up about 45%, 40 to 45%. Ticket sales were up from, from last year, which is huge. So we had our biggest game on Expo tennis wise. If you were there at the show, if you've seen videos of the show, you know that it was busy. Uh, you know, vendors were overall pretty happy. We had some hiccups during vendor move out, which again, kind of falls on the security spot, not to point the finger, throw them in the bus, but it was kind of the security's issue. But again, we worked through it. Uh, we live and learn. Um, but there, you know, just if, if my advice, if you ever, a lot of people come up to me and they're like, John, I want to do a show. And there are some other great shows. So my first step was be to, my advice is go to shows local to you. Support your local shows, right? I know a lot of owners. Uh, Patrick's a good dude. He runs the Retro Game Con up in Syracuse. Um, I know the uh, NES Pursuit, those guys just recently took over. SoCal Retro Gaming Expo. Billy and Jay, Retro Palooza down in Texas. And, you know, there's a lot of great groups out there. There's a lot of great events out there. Support them. Check them out. See what they're doing right. See what they're doing wrong. Take notes. You know, and I think the biggest mistake I see people who to do shows for the first time is they want to go big year one, right? And they put in all this money and all these guests and they want to go big year one, go big or go home, right? And that can be very challenging. Now, it's, is it possible to do that? Absolutely, uh, it is, but it's gonna, you're going to put a lot more stress on yourself. So if you want to start an event, start small. You know, maybe start at a local uh, venue, small venue. Maybe there's like a local YMCA or something that you can you can rent out or something like that. Um, maybe a local church or uh, a VFW or hall or something like that you can rent out and start kind of small uh, or grow organically. That's how we've done with Game On Expo. It took me five years <laughs> to get to break even with the Game On Expo. The first year, and I do not recommend this, but the first year I put all the expenses on my credit card, right? I maxed out my credit cards, super scary, not recommended. My wife uh, clearly was not happy with me. Uh, I was fortunate where we got to the point where I could pay those off, those bills off. And we're okay now, but uh, I was dumb in doing that, right? Um, so definitely don't do that. <laughs> you know, uh, my philosophy from year one is you make the attendees happy, you make the vendors happy, right? And vice versa. If the vendors are ha vendors happy, the attendees are happy. So you got to make sure you take care of the people first and foremost. I, for the first years, I still do this. I put a lot of money into back into the show. Now people think, oh, John, you're rich to the show. You had, you know, tens of thousands of people. You know, you had thousands of people there. Uh, you must be making a, a ton of money. Well, no, I, I still have my day job. Uh, I haven't quit my day job. I still love what I do for my day job. Um, so I am not into a position where I can quit my day job and, and be comfortable. Um, now, am I making money on the show? Yes, I'm making a little bit of money on the show, but not as much as I think most people would think. Um, it's not a get rich opportunity, right? I'm not doing this to get rich. I, I wanted to share a story with you real quick. And 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 so I got this email. I'm going to show, I'm going to keep it anonymous, but I want to read this to you, and this is the reason I do the show. And, and when I read this, I got emotional, I'll be honest with you, uh, reading it. Um, and it's the reason it's worth it at the end of the day. And, and comments like this are worth more than gold. So, got this following email, let me read it to you. Hello, my name is, I'll leave it blank, uh, and I wanted to say thank you for so much for having such a great collection of actors, vendors, and all around good vibes. This is my family's first nerd outing. As a special needs parent, I was absolutely terrified. Our special needs daughter, uh, she loves video games and had a lot of fun dressing up as the lamb from the cold lamb. I also wanted to say a special thank you to you and your security staff and the volunteers. One staff member in a black dress and a brown jacket informed us that we could see a voice actor because their lines was dedicated for VIP despite having an ADA pass. Let me pause right there. That obviously sucks that that, that volunteer said that. That's not what we do. ADA, we do have special passes for ADA for those who need ADA. Uh, and uh, anyway, let's continue. We were about to leave unhappy since our kiddo was becoming overwhelmed, overstimulated, but a wonderful uh, vendor told us to try again, and we did. Not only did four or five other staff members say what they and the previous staff member was wrong, but they made sure that we saw their voice actor in question as, as be extremely kind in our special needs kiddo. I cannot tell you in wonders how much I cry because everyone's kindness and tender care. There was our family's first outing into this kiddos, and she said she felt normal. Thanks for so much for this experience. It means the world to us. 
that last sentence got me a little bit um, because when you know nor what is normal today right i mean at the end of the day what is normal uh but for that is the mission for why i do this is because i want game on expo to be a place where whether you're special needs or you want to dress a certain way and be who you are you feel comfortable in that space and i think that's really important uh especially in today's society uh and where people feel uh comfortable and we need more of that in today's world so and if even if I can provide those three days a year, you know, where some come in and just feel happy and and celebrate who they are, because I believe everyone's unique. I believe everyone's different. I believe we all have different apparent, uh, opinions, and uh, whether we can agree to disagree, that's that's what makes the world a wonderful place. And we need to celebrate the individuality, because if we were all the same and we all agreed on everything, life and society would be extremely boring. Let's face it. So that's why I do this, and and it's comments like that that make me get up every morning and say, you know what, I'm going to put this hard work into this because at the day I know I'm bringing a lot of joy to many, many people. I, I, I want to share some highlights as well uh, about Game On Expo. And this is, our guest lineup was stacked. I mean, we had uh, voice actors from, um, you know, Boulder's Gate 3. We had the top four people from Boulder's Gate 3, which is awesome. And I got to meet all of them, got to hang out and have dinner with them and just like, it's mind blowing to meet them and they're so nice and down to earth and humbled. And I spoke to Neil Newbon in the elevator once and I was talking to him and he's a voice of Styrian in the game of Boulder's Gate. And I said, dude, what do you think about this? Like people, he, his lines were crazy long all weekend. He definitely was crazy busy all weekend and he's just so humbled. And he was like, John, you know, I'm just riding the wave, man. You know, and he's like, uh, I'm just so, he was so honored by the people's fans reactions. And I think that's truly how I respect that. And I think that's how people should, should celebrate that, right? And you know, no one, not one of our guests were were divas, so to speak, right? They were all very down to earth. We had the voice actors from uh, the top three people from uh, GTA Five. We had uh, Red Dead Redemption. We had a bunch of people from Resident Evil, uh, Jill Valentine, uh, Claire. We had uh, Chris Redfield. I mean, you name it, we had it. We had about five or six people from Resident Evil. Uh, we had people. I've been working on this for the past year and I'm super excited this week. I'm actually wearing a shirt now. We had a lot of the guys from the original Rare team back in the day who worked on Dunk on Country. Uh, Dave Weiss, for example, did the music for Dunk on Country. We had uh, uh, Kevin Bayless who did the artwork. Uh, we had David Doak who who was in Golden. I had him actually sign a box. Both of them signed a box. Some games for me while they're there and I took a picture with them and like it's, they did a live concert and then the video here, I'm, when I'm done talking, I'll play you some snippets of some of the concert that they played. And when they started playing the aquatic underwater song from Dunk on Country, which is m one of my favorite songs of any soundtrack ever, uh, live at my show, I got emotional. And to like think that, um, you know, when I was a young kid and uh, growing up uh, playing this game, I would have never imagined that I would have had like become friends with these guys who work on these games that are so classic. And I've gotten to know a lot of people uh, through the years uh, doing Game on Expo, a lot of great people, the Mortal Kombat guys, they're good friends of mine. Uh, Tim Kitzer, who is the voice of NBA Jam, like uh, I can call him any guy and just talk and he's a super new, nice guy. And and uh, I never would imagine growing up as a kid uh, that I would have created something special for people. And that's, that's really cool. So that's one of the reasons why I do uh, Game on Expo. <laughs> A uh, couple of funny stories, uh, real quick before I wrap things up, I want to share is uh, we were in our green room and uh, Neil was up there and have lunch and his panel was going to be at 1.30 on Saturday and he wanted to go on the PA and announce that he was going to be, uh, uh, his panel was coming up and I said, you got the microphones there and he wanted to make an announce so everyone in the, sh the show could hear it. And I said, sure. You know, he asked me and of course when he talks, he actually sounds like a Styrian, it's pretty trippy, but uh, anyway, um, so he was in character and he has a Styrian. And uh, he's, he has a mic and he turned it on. He's like, this is a Styrian from, from Baldur's Gate 3. Come come see me in my panel 1.30. Fuck, what, what time is the panel, John? On the mic. And uh, <laughs> I mean, like it was like one of those moments. He kind of turned white. I mean, you know, it was a natural slip, but a natural fib. And that was really funny. Another funny moment was we actually added wrestling uh, this year. We had a live ring, a ring with live wrestlers all day, every day, uh, throughout the day. And uh, a couple of the guys wrestlers actually got in, you know, they're in character and stuff, but they got out of the ring and started wrestling in the aisle, which is interesting. And I was down there and I went up to the, I got a, I got a call, I left and got a call on my, my walkie and said, we need police and security, we're having a fight in the aisle. 
and I knew right away it was some wrestling guys. And I'm walking them in. I'm like, uh, that's just a wrestling snack. They're just, you know, but I thought it was kind of funny too. Um, big shout out, of course, to my team. Shout out to, to Claire, who was our moderator, Joel, uh, Ashley, our moderators there. They're incredible. We did film all our panels. Uh, go to Media Glitch's website. I'll put a link to his website below, Joel. He did film all the panels. Uh, so we've got or main panels anyway. So you want to check out the Boulder's Great 3 panel. I did create a Game on Expo web, uh, not a website, I have a website, but a uh, YouTube channel. I did create a Game on Expo YouTube channel recently and get that active. So I'll put a link below. Appreciate the, the subscri subscription if you guys are so inclined to subscribe to that channel. I did post the Boulder Gate 3 panel on our on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's hilarious. Uh, so I encourage you guys to check that out. We're going to post some more short videos and behind the scenes takes and, and things like that as well. So thank you for subscribing to that. Uh, subscribe, check out Media Glitch as well. And uh, shout out to my good friends Dorian and Mike. They have been with Game on Expo since year one, and we started this, what we call the Retro, it used to be called the Retro World Championships, now it's just Retro Championships. And it's essentially classic games. So we take Donkey Kong Country competition cart for Super Nintendo, Star Fox competition cart, Super Nintendo. We take the Nintendo World Championship cart, uh, Campus Challenge carts, and we kind of do kind of a tournament in that. And so they win a belt, which is awesome. But the top scorer won gold cart here. And this is Nintendo World Championship cart, gold. Uh, I'm an owner of one, the winner, I think there's only two other ones that exist, so that's pretty sweet. And we did sell, uh, I think we made like maybe 10 copies of these. This is a Nintendo Championship card, but you can see it's got the Game One Expo Retro Championships logo on it. And then we got the Star Fox with that super cool Donkey Kong Country with the Game One Expo logo, Retro Championships logo, and the Campus Challenge 91. There's also 94 Super Nintendo one as well. Um, so those are really some cool takeaways. I did buy... Uh, one thing I did get, I did get the Jaws uh, pinball, premium pinball game from Game On. I'll do a video on that shortly. Uh, but now I'm going to show you some some snippets of the live concert from the Rare Guys. I call them the Rare Guys. They're good guys. Uh, two Davids, uh, Kevin Bayless, as well as Grant Kirkhope, who's a composer of Goldeneye. And when they play, again, play Goldeneye and stuff, it was so incredible experience. It was really, it was packed. It was awesome. And then I'm going to show you uh, some highlights that... Uh, that we had of the show as well after that. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video, for, for bearing with me, for your support, for, for my channel, for Game On Expo, for Collector Vision Games and all that I do. Uh, now I'm going to dive into Collector Vision Games more that I have time. We did release, real quick, Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mind is now out on Xbox and PlayStation 4 and 5, so that's that's cool. So Switch and Steam as well. Uh, and we've got some great games we're coming out with, too, so I'm really excited about the future of Collector Vision Games. We'll see you guys soon. Take care, and... Let's check it out. Game on.
you next year.